Ash the Minion and welcome to another episode of my beginner's guide to the long dark. Today we're going to leave Mountain Town and head into Mystery Lake. But we're going to focus more today on gameplay, things like managing inventory for rope climbs, dealing with wolves and how we navigate around a region. We've begun today's episode in the Orca in Mountain Town. And from here, we're going to head up to the office and the climbing area. We, of course, have a lit torch in case of wolves and we'll attempt to keep a torch train going for as long as the weather allows us to. You'll notice I'm not picking up any sticks um, and that's because I'm trying to keep the weight down since there are two rope climbs that we're going to need to navigate. There are a, a couple of oak trees around here so if acorns is your thing you can get some acorns as well. So we're just heading up to the little office now. I'm going to do a quick uh, loot, see if there's anything useful um, before we start heading over to the first rope climb. Now there's a memento key and a note here and it's a clue to a location with a locked cache. I'm going to leave that here for now as we'll be back in Mountain Town again at some point. Take any food. I'm going to take some scrap metal. Eventually we want to forge. We've got a useful reading book here that we can read to pass time if necessary. So if we're stuck in a cave during a blizzard, etc. We found these ski gloves. I'm going to take those because they are warmer than the leather ones that we're wearing at the moment. But the insulated boots that we saw there, I'm leaving because they are pretty heavy. So we'll head over now to the climbing area and there's a rope over here. We're not currently encumbered so we can go straight down the rope. If we were encumbered we need to drop some weight. Other things that impact rope climbs are being tired. This will drain your energy quicker and you could potentially fall and die. Now, if you craft improvised crampons at some point, they can be a big help um, in, ro in rope climbs at the moment. So we've just navigated the first rope climb. We're going to head over towards the second one. Again, we're not picking up sticks because the next one is a climb up, so that takes more energy. But we do see some reishi mushrooms in the distance, and as always, and especially as you start to progress to interloper, where tea and coffee are much scarcer um, as a resource, you want to make sure that you collect reishi mushrooms and rose hips so you can craft more teas. Got some more rose hips here. I'm 
Now the rope is in the distance there. There's also a cave here where you can make a fire uh, to warm teas, pull torches, take shelter if the weather turns, or even sleep if you need to improve your tiredness before taking the next rope. It's a safe cave, there are no bears up here. Got some rose tips on the outside that we can take. And on lower levels especially, there's a bit of loot in here as well. I've got some wood, a bag that we can check, etc. So I'm going to make the fire at the back of the cave because that's the warmer part of the cave. And when, when you make a fire, cook up some water so you don't waste the fuel. And I'm probably gonna sleep for an hour just to replenish some energy. I don't need it um, too much, but I wanna make sure that I can fully manage the rope. And seeing as we're stopping, it makes sense to, to just improve my, my energy. So I did do a, a sleep for an hour. We're going to head now for the next rope, which is a climb up. Again, we're not encumbered. Our energy is good. And we're also keeping an eye on our surroundings because there is a potential for a wolf, a wolf spawn here. So just keep an eye out. And then we're going to take the rope up. You can see the, the um, kind of sprint dial your uh, speed of activity um, drains a lot quicker when you go up ropes than to when you go down ropes. Now there's only one way you can go from the top of the rope, so just keep following it until you come to the transition cave. Now I have made an earlier video uh, on region transitions from Mountain Town so I'm not going to do the full walk and we'll pick this up again in Mystery Lake. So here we are, we've arrived. You can see trappers in the distance just over the way and we're going to head there first. There's also the possible uh, possibility of a bear or a moose in this area. So just keep your eyes peeled, check around, make sure they're not there. They don't tend to come around the back of here, so I'm kind of walking from the cave. I've gone left to, to make my way around the back of trappers. There are rabbits here, and in the distance you can see some saplings. And those saplings, I think, are potentially there on interloper as well. And the first thing I'm going to do when I get into trappers is light the fire whilst, whilst I have a lit torch. Now, matches are prevalent in Voyager, but it's a good habit to get into as when you progress to interloper, matches are much scarcer and wasting them can be detrimental to your run. Trappers is somewhere you'll come back to so whilst you have a fire going, make water that you can leave here. Don't waste the fuel in your fire. And then whilst the water is boiling, you can loot, check the safe, harvest. And I'm even going to um, cook a bunny that I found in the transition cave as I came through.
you can also warm up any teas you've got if you have a thermos they can go in that as I say we just do some looting while we're waiting for our water we haven't got a rifle so I'm leaving the rifle am ammunition there Now it's getting quite late in the day so we're going to actually sleep here um, but it's not quite dark enough to sleep so we're going to read a book to pass some time we want to be able to sleep as late as possible in the morning is a cold is a really cold part of the day so we want to sleep as late as possible uh, sleep for 10 hours uh, and of course before we sleep we eat and make sure our water is uh, water level is fully full so we've got enough calories to do the 10 hour sleep and this is especially important if your health bar is getting low as a full sleep will replenish uh, your health I'm drinking the sodas um, that are in my inventory before I drink the water just to get the weight down. I'm going to sleep for 10 hours. Now 10 hours is a good time to sleep but especially on interloper because of the condition recovery. So we've slept the full amount <clears throat> and as you can see when we check the time of day it's not quite sun up. So I'm going to pass some time making some more water, warming up the teas ready for when we leave. Now it's almost daylight now um, so we're going to leave Trappers and head to the camp office next. And I'm going around the back of trappers rather than crossing the main area just in case the bear or moose appear. Until we have a bow we really want to avoid these. We do, we do have the revolver but th that's not great especially not for the bigger animals. We'll walk past the transition cave again which is where you go to mountain town so as you're commuting between the two regions you, you're going to come back to trappers time and time again so leaving water or food and things like that is, is always useful want to keep an eye on the weather I'm just doing a double check for the bear keeping our torch in our hand and we'll try and keep a torch train going also on this route towards the camp office there is the possibility of finding birch bark so we want to keep a, a look out for that oh found a piece of coal okay snowing as well at the moment we're probably going to get wet and there is the potential that it could turn into a blizzard okay oh there's our first piece of birch bark
Now you can use birch bark to craft restorative teas um, which really help with condition recovery as well. Oh, this wind's going to blow out our torch. It's getting more, more powerful. Now this is wolf territory as well. Some more birch bark here. And because of the wind, we're going to keep a flare in our hand this time. Um, you can use them the same as you use a torch. But they don't blow out in the wind like your torch does. Obviously you've made sure that you've got a weapon or you've got a stone if you don't have a weapon. We're not going to try and avoid this wolf. But the minute he he barks, that's it. He's seen us. And he's coming for us. So we'll light that flare. And then we can drop it, put the stone in our hand or a weapon, and don't forget to aim. Pick up our flare and keep going. So the wires at the top you can see are above a, a railway line and we, we're just going to follow the railway line until we see the camp office. This is a popular place for people to set up base camp due to its central location within the region. There's a big lake behind it that's got a lot of cattails on. You get deer on the lake. You do get wolves on the lake as well. Um, and there's even a, a nearby cave if you end up getting cabin risk, uh, risk uh, or cabin fever even. So again, we're going to um, loot in here make all warm teas, make water and we're going to wait out the, the weather. Now downstairs in the camp office is a potbelly stove but you don't really want to use this, you want to go upstairs. Upstairs there is a wood stove and that has two cooking slots. And one thing to be aware of, especially in Voyager, is the amount of loot available. You can get overweight really quickly. So whilst at the, the camp office, I had a bit of an inventory sort out and left some things for when I come back next time. And from the camp office, we're going to head next to the dam. And it's really just a case of following the track. On the way, um, there will be a de derailment and a train car, which may have some loot in. The derailment is the red train cars that you can see in the distance, and you can pick up a couple of flares there on lower difficulties. And then in the train car, there may be a um, go juice or something like that. There are wolves along the re um, along the route, so just make sure you'll keep your torch train going or in this instance we had to light a flare at some point. So we've arrived at the dam area, there's two trailers outside and we're going to leave those for now, we'll loop them when we come back out. We're going to head straight into the dam. The dam itself is one of the largest structures in the whole game. It's also quite dark, 
so if you've got a lantern and spare lantern fuel that can really really help if not you're going to need a lot of torches it's also incredibly dangerous in an aurora so you don't really want to be caught here of a night um, there are lots of wires on the floor and if you get caught here in an aurora walking around is not advised and we've, used, we've just found some revolver cartridges on the floor and we do have a revolver so i've picked those up Yeah, so in an aurora, the, the wires get electrified. Um, so you, you don't really want to find that you've put your bed down on one of those. And again, we're going to loot. This is the, the, uh, the first room, the entrance, if you like. And those vents, some, in some areas, they open and you might find something in there, although I never have. Now, if I'm doing a full dam loot, I tend to, once I've done in this room, I go into the next set of rooms, have a quick loot to the, uh, to the right, and then I walk up the stairs. And I do that so I can start at the top and work, work my way down. So I make sure I, I loot everything. And we've got this great storm lantern here. So I tend to search the lockers here. Two more lockers here. And then there's a bathroom behind this where you can get potable water if you need it. Remember to search the trash cans as well. You can find some things in there. A pair of boots in there. Uh, in here so I'm going to look at the condition of mine they're 57% these are these are only 29% I'm going to leave those behind cloth is always useful for repairing clothes and then at this point I'm going to head upstairs I'm going to work my way down and then you can go into the central room and then loot the other side of the dam. But how you want to loot is up to you. This is this is just how I do it. checking our clothes all that that put us up by three degrees where we went from 13 to 16 by putting that coat on that was good as a this is the as i say the dam is a uh, biggest structure one of the biggest structures and there is a lot to loot there's all the drawers in the desks you need to look under the desks uh, in all the drawers etc but once you've finished we're gonna we head then to the main central room sometimes it's corpse here sometimes he has painkillers or a knife now it's dark if you look at my my tiredness bar it's in the red and that's so I need to sleep I don't want to go and put my bedroll in the main room because there are live open wires 
and I run the risk that if an aurora comes of a night, I'm going to be electrocuted. So I'm going to put my bedroll in this corridor where there are no open wires. And then, as usual, eat if we've got food, drink until you are full. and then you can sleep. So we're just eating some of the foods that we've got. Oh, we've got some open stuff there. And I've picked up quite a, quite a bit of stuff in here, so. We can eat plenty and keep our health up. And then when we go to the drinks, we've picked up a lot of soda. So I'm going to pick uh, to drink the soda. And then we'll get our 10 hours sleep. So pick up the bedroll. Have a drink. In fact, I'm going to sleep for another two hours instead because I hadn't fully uh done my tiredness bar up so get our lamp back lit and then we head into the main the main room there is a fire barrel here um so you can use it if you want to pull torches or cook anything or make water you can see all the cables on the floor. It's really difficult navigating around the dam in, a, in an aurora. And once you've explored all of that, you need to head into the lower dam part. And there's a couple of arrows in this door in lower levels. Don't get excited into lower players. It, it won't be there. But you can take those, harvest them, and you can get a, an arrow head and a feather back. We've got some more storm lanterns there. I'm going to take those because it's a better condition. And then you just navigate um, all of this. Now in this first room, there is a door that you can go through. It's a one-way door. So you can't get back in except for walking over the damn wall and climbing through a window. So I suggest that unless you specifically want to go outside, you don't go through that door. It does take you to Pleasant Valley. So we'll probably see that in a later episode when we head to Pleasant Valley. And again, it's just looting. Keep searching, keep looting. Drawers, desk drawers, filing cabinets, under shelving units, on shelving units, keep your eye on boxes, things like that. And just keep following this through all the way to the end. And then once you're done, just turn around, head all the way back to the main room and then back to the entrance. And then we'll leave the dam and we'll just check the trailers on our way out and see if there's any good loot as well.
going to do a bit of, uh, bit of looting. There's um, simple tools there. It's a flare. Flares are great. As we've already seen, they don't go out in the wind. So if you see a flare, pick it up. It's always good to have an amount of flares on you. So I've looted there, I've followed the track back heading towards the camp office because that's our final destination. But I'm just going to veer off slightly um, and head to the logging camp. So we're going to take this slight detour. Now there are three trailers here um, that can be searched. And also in the little broken building, there's um, a little uh, pot belly stove, I think, if you need to warm anything up. And I'm collecting the scrap metal because we want to forge eventually. We want to get our bow. Okay, we've arrived back at the camp office and we're spending the night here. It also gives us time to do some chores. So whilst it's still light, we can repair some of our clothes, um, which you can do while it's still light. You can't do repairs in the dark, but you can in the light. When it gets dark, that's the time when you can do crafting, which is things like um, preparing birch bark, preparing rose hips, preparing reishi mushrooms. Um, we can sharpen uh, a hatchet and our knife and we can clean our revolver. So do some repairs. Just keep an eye on your clothes all the way through your game. Keep an eye on your clothes. And especially if you get attacked, if your clothes are low quality, low condition, they'll just get destroyed if you get into a wolf or a bear struggle. And then once you can't repair anymore, use a whetstone, sharpen your knife. and use a gun cleaning kit if you found one to clean your revolver and if you found one your rifle as well we'll end the episode here thank you so much for watching see you next time bye